participants of the third hybrid upscales uh, multiplier event. Uh, my name is Antal van den Bos. I work at Utrecht University. I'm a computational linguist. I'm also a member of the board of directors of Clarin. Um, today, I'm, I'm very happy to tell you a little bit about the Dutch national Clarin project, which is called Claria, uh, and particularly how Claria has been thinking about um, providing access to its resources for training and educational purposes. So Claria is a in name is a contraction of the names of Clarin and, and Daria. Uh, Daria is uh, one other uh, European level uh, research infrastructure for the humanities. Um, we've both teamed up as in as in other countries as uh, Claria. Um, Claria has a has a long history. Um, there has been uh, several projects. Uh, before uh, Claria, uh, one was called Clarin NL. This was uh, in concert with Clarin Flanders in um, from 2009 to 2014. But before that, there was the Stavin program and the Spoken Dutch Corpus uh, project, um, which uh, involved at least an, an overlapping set of people from uh, both uh, Belgium and the Netherlands, uh, with people like Jan Odijk. Uh, in in uh, often in the position of uh, project uh, director or PI, um, and um, this is a long history. It starts in 1998, and uh, it's still uh, ongoing for the next calendar year. Uh, the Claria Plus uh, projects, so the third funded Claria project, is still uh, in place, and um, there is a new application uh, on the way uh, being reviewed as we speak. So these are substantial uh, investments uh, done by the Dutch and the, and the Flemish or Belgian governments, um, sustained uh, developments, which is good because uh, it has allowed us to uh, continue the development of resources and tools uh, over, over the years. So the current Claria Plus uh, project uh, started in 2019 and it runs until the end of next year. Um, it's a Dutch project, so it doesn't involve uh, our Flemish partners, unfortunately, but this is how it is at the moment. Uh, it's a large budget. So uh, for all of the projects so far, there's been a uh, big contribution by the National um, Science Foundation, NWO. Uh, but uh, we have pledged um, uh, large contributions in kind, uh, and this has been the same. So there are a number of institutes in the Netherlands who have pledged this contribution for the past uh, 20 years, because partially it's also their mission. So uh, some of the national institutes in the Netherlands, including, for example, the Meertens Institute, with which I was um, affiliated for the past uh, six years, uh, has uh, an uh, as part of its mission, the, um, uh, the maintenance of and digitization of uh, heritage, uh, scientific heritage um, collections pertaining to texts and speech and dialects and uh, other historical uh, data uh, sources, also structured data uh, sources. So uh, as these uh, institutes have uh, a commitment to to, to uh, storing and, and, and giving access to these types of cultural scientific uh, heritage uh, collections, um, it is only natural that they, they contribute uh, to this project uh, in kind and in cash as well. So Claria continues to extend its research uh, infrastructure. Um, it integrates uh, part of the uh, European Claren and Daria research infrastructures. We connect to these uh, infrastructures. Uh, it uh, co closely collaborates with other uh, related infrastructure projects in the, in the Netherlands, like Nederlab and uh, the Amsterdam Time Machine project. Uh, currently, the, the, the next uh, installment is, um, is going to be uh, uh, a funding application that we hope uh, that will be uh, accepted. This is a funding application that we have done together with uh, uh, the Dutch National Research Infrastructure for Social Sciences, which is Odyssey. 
so we have actually submitted a proposal under the name uh, SHOC, S-S-H-O-C, uh, named after the European uh, project, of course, that also combined the social sciences and the humanities infrastructures. So in uh, the Claria project, there's a number of uh, work packages aside from the management work package one. Uh, and here you see the uh, the, the institutes that are mainly responsible um, co coordinating each of the work packages. So you see several different uh, national institutes being responsible for uh, the various parts where work package three is of um, interest to Clarin because here you'll find the the particular language and linguistics related um, development of resources and tools coordinated by the Meertens Institute uh, in close collaboration with the Max Planck Institute in Nijmegen for Psycholinguistics and the Institute for the Nederlandse Taal, the Institute for the Dutch Language in Leiden and other partners, I should say. So some of the services that have been developed in Claria Core, so the previous project, have uh, are uh, La Machine, which is a, for linguistics and language, is a large software package, a software stack of tools, including the Alpino dependency parser and the Frog natural language processing pipeline. For work package four, there's a data legend uh, suite of, uh, of tools uh, to to generate um, stories from uh, from structured data, historical data, and there's the I think pretty famous media suite uh, developed in Work Package Five on new media uh, based on the Dutch uh, public broadcasting uh, archives, radio and TV. There's a new resource infrastructure Ineo, and I'll, I'll talk briefly about it. So Ineo. Uh, his the logo is a um, is a portal. Uh, Ineo is Latin. It means I enter or I begin. Um, the goals of Ineo is to offer users one starting point to find uh, Claria NL digital resources instead of having these different portals that I just mentioned. Like the Media Suite is a wonderful search engine for Dutch uh, public broadcasting archives, but uh, it would be nice to have that integrated. Uh, one step higher uh, in one uh, interface. The interface is coherent uh, in the way it presents information. It's based on what users actually uh, have reported uh, they want to see in uh, an interface like this. So the present situation is that we have these different uh, interfaces. And this is a page like you can Look it up now. Ineo is, is being filled, so you have you have to go to ineo.tools. Um, that's the URL. And for each uh, resource page, you would find information that is both useful for humans who want to explore the interface. Uh, of course, there's a way to to get uh, to the interface, but you will also read about projects that are based on the media suite, for example, and um, there are tutorials of how to use it. And on the right side, you will see a, a column with information that is all about um, the uh, metadata uh, pertaining to the, in this case, the media suite. And this metadata is also computer readable. Um, it's standardized uh, metadata uh, that is also picked up by, by, by Clarin uh, further on in the VLO, for example, and the Clarin uh, switchboard. So Claria is obviously interested in um, seeing its tools and resources being used for, uh, for courses. Now, I recently started at Utrecht University and I was also invited to uh, join a course uh, which is called Corpus Research for Dutch Language and Literature, or Neerlandistiek, as it is called in the Netherlands. And um, this course, uh, I'm just copying its, its goals here, uh, is that students get familiarized with a number of important corpora and tools for the humanities, among which Nederlap, DBNL, uh, sonar and the spoken Dutch corpus, where the, where the red ones are uh, Clarin tools. They've been developed um, alongside and within uh, Clarin and are still being developed uh, and, and incorporated in uh, Clarin, Claria uh, and um, Ineo. 
students understand the way these corpora and tools have been built, which data can be found in these corpora, what the features of these data are, and what the possibilities and limitations of these tools are. So the students are able to ask meaningful questions to these corpora, accounting for the possibilities and limitations. They're able to do research, and they're able to order, interpret, and analyze uh, the data. So Nadalop, just to highlight Nadalop, uh, it's a, a corpus that gives access to 18 billion words of Dutch uh, from uh, the past uh, up to the, the near present printed Dutch that has been digitized or um, manually uh, transcribed uh, over time uh, by institutes like the National Library and some of the national uh, research institutes like Institute for the Nederlandse Taal. Uh, this uh, search interface is an, is an engram viewer, among other things. It has several types of visualizations and the corpus, uh, the corpora, I should say, are fully uh, part of speech tagged and lemmatized. Not perfectly, I should add, but uh, but automatically everything has been processed by uh, lemmatizers and part of speech taggers that have been trained uh, on uh, the historical variants uh, of, uh, of Dutch. So the spoken Dutch corpus, also mentioned before, is a, uh, a collection of, of uh, about 900 hours, uh, close to 9 million words of uh, Dutch speech um, spoken by people in the Flanders uh, region of Belgium and uh, and in the Netherlands, and they've been manually transcribed on uh, all the levels that you would like, so orthographic, phonetic, uh, but also syntactic, morphosyntactic. Um, there's a lot of uh, rich metadata available, uh, and uh, there's a good corpus exploitation tool uh, so this is a corpus that um, that is still being used um, uh, a lot. It's uh, it's maintained at the Institute for the Dutch Language. Um, it contains uh, a massive amount of uh, spontaneous uh, speech uh, that is, for example, usable for training uh, speech recognition systems. Open Sonar is uh, is a is a search engine on present day written Dutch, so complementing. Uh, the two uh, resources that I mentioned earlier. Uh, Sonar just gives access to uh, an amazing amount of uh, newspaper data and other uh, uh, types of uh, uh, digital uh, text, including um, computer mediated communication and social media. Now, giving students access to these corpora, of course, allows them to do a lot of different things uh, in in uh, studying Dutch uh, language uh, and, and and culture. Uh, now, uh, giving uh, students tools um, uh, also uh, in the end might uh, mean uh, giving them the let's say the ultimate tool, which is which is computer programming. And uh, my personal opinion is that uh, programming should be part of uh, all curricula, basically. Um, definitely also all language related curricula because um, it allows students to work with uh, data with all the flexibility that they would ever uh, need, uh, not being constrained to whatever the functionality of the of the tools are that they that they are using. So I'm just highlighting a book here, uh, Humanities Data Analysis Case Studies with uh, Python. It's written by Volker Krasdorp, Mike Kestelmond, and Ellen Rydell. So Volker and Mike are uh, Dutch and Flemish colleagues, uh, respectively. Um, they've been working in digital humanities um, programming for uh, many years now. They've been uh, 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 popularizing the idea that you uh, should uh, also consider learning Python as a as a very powerful programming language, and this, uh, I think this parallels the call for for learning uh, the statistical uh, language R, capital R. Uh, Python is a is a very strong um, and flexible programming language, and this book um, just walks the reader in a pretty advanced uh, at a pretty advanced level through uh, humanities data analysis, uh, types of data analysis linked to uh, research questions in 
um, political science and computational stylometry um, and other um, related uh, example domains. The interesting part about this book is it's not only uh, freely available, it's also an interactive Jupyter book. So it's an executable book. It, it, the book runs its, itself. It runs code. Uh, you can uh, work with uh, with the code and also adapt the code and uh, and run it for yourself. Another type of uh, resource that we see the, uh, happening in uh, in in many type many different uh, countries, including uh, the Netherlands and Belgium, is uh, is the, the the advent of large language models. And the, this is an example of a large language modeling uh, retraining project. Um, called Macbert and Gijsbert. Gijsbert is a, a large language model for historical uh, Dutch. Uh, it's textual material coming from uh, 1450 to 1950, uh, five centuries of, uh, of Dutch text. Uh, and Robert uh, for the for the present uh, day. Uh, Robert is a, uh, a much used uh, Roberta transformer based uh, large language model, which can be used for statistical language modeling and can also be fine tuned to many different types of tasks, um, uh, detecting uh, cyber bullying or humor are, are example applications, but also sequence processing tasks like um, named entity recognition and part of speech tagging or co-reference resolution. And it's tools like this uh, that I think should also be taught in the classroom um, to, to students who want to get hands-on uh, access to the latest and best uh, models out there. So that was it. it in a, in, in um, a nutshell, uh, I've been walking you through the Claria project and its attempts to get the get its uh, corpora out, uh, which have culminated so far in the INEO portal and lots of different uh, interfaces to its main uh, resources. I've also given you uh, an illustration of what I think is a fairly uh, average situation in a country like the Netherlands, where increasingly many students are uh, given the opportunity in some courses at the bachelor and master level to uh, to get to know get to know these resources and i think uh just to come back to my my uh my personal opinion here is that that programming uh, in python for example or in r or both should should be an integral part of uh, of curricula uh develop the curriculum development um so i thank you for your attention um and i wish the upstills skills project uh, a lot of uh, success